Welcome to John Gitz Games. Today I'll be doing a full game playthrough of Convoy, which is in the Neuroshima universe. This is a two-player only game with asymmetric sides where one side is playing a massive army of robots heading towards New York and all they want to do is destroy New York and the other team is the outpost, a bunch of humans and buildings and they're trying desperately to slow down this assault and just stop the robots before they destroy New York. Let's jump right in and I'll explain how the game goes as we're playing it, so let's start. Here's the starting setup for a game of Convoy. We have the Outpost deck up here and the Moloch deck down here. And as I mentioned before, they are quite asymmetric. They play pretty differently. The Outpost gets to build buildings while the Moloch gets to affix modules onto their different robots. You'll see how that stuff works soon. We see this little ring here which shows that this district is going to be where the first battlefield in the game will evaluate in Ziggy 1 and different cities have different numbers of districts where these battles will occur. Throughout the game we're going to be evaluating all these battlefields until we get to the very far right one in New York and once that's evaluated if the Moloch player has at least one robot in New York or at least one card in their deck still then they win. If not then the outpost player wins. So let's jump right into the game and I'll explain how everything works as we go. The first thing that happens on every turn is each player is going to draw two cards from the top of their deck into their hands. And now it's the Moloch player's turn. They always get to do their actions before the outpost. And you can see their hand here. We've got uh, Ripper, Spiders, all sorts of cool robots. We've also got a couple modules here. Now the Moloch player is not allowed to use these modules at all until after the outpost player does their actions. So effectively, these are the cards that we're looking at. There are a couple different actions that a player can do on their turn and they can do as many as they want and they can hit them multiple times. The main one is simply taking a card, in this case for the Moloch, a robot, and putting him down into the battlefield. So I think the Moloch player likes the look of this transporter and if you look at this card you'll see we have a strength value of 2, okay that makes sense, and we have an activation with this little up arrow symbol. This uh, means that the special text happens every time this robot enters a new city. So if it gets played that happens or if it gets moved around. We see it says when it enters a city you draw a card from your deck. Well, the Moloch player is going to play it down here in Ziggy 1, which is the first battlefield, and the moment it enters that city, they get to draw a new card from their deck, and it looks like, ooh, it's a Stormtrooper. Next up, our Moloch player wants to play a Brute. We see it has a strength of 2, it once again also has an Entering the City activation, and it says place a shield token on a chosen robot. So the effects of these uh, special things on the bottom always have to happen to other units that are in that specific city, so they get to take a shield token from the supply, and put it on another robot, in this case it would be the transporter. And this shield token defends that robot from any specialized skill effects that an outpost card might do at them. It's essentially the text down here on the bottom in the black. And lastly, I think our Moloch player wants to play these spiders. Now their activation is a little infinite symbol, which means this just is an ongoing thing, and we see the permanent skill is the spiders do not occupy a battle station. Well, what that means is you might have noticed these numbers out here on the cities. This is the number of battle stations that city has for these specific sides. Uh, this number here means that the Moloch player can have a maximum of three robots in that uh, city. However, spiders don't count. But I think our Moloch player wants to put it here at the Iron Gate. Now, we're currently in Ziggy 1, but you're always allowed to play cards in future cities. In fact, when you put down a robot, or if the outpost put down a soldier, in a city that was undefended, as in it has no of the, none of the opponent's cards on the other side, then it automatically gets a plus one strength bonus for, I guess, just digging in and knowing the area. Alright, the Moloch player doesn't feel like playing either of these two cards at the moment because they don't really do good stuff and they can't do modules yet so they pass and it's now the outpost player's turn to do actions. So the outpost player gets both building cards and soldier cards in addition to uh, instant effect cards that the Moloch player also has access to. These buildings count towards this battle station account so it's buildings and soldiers adding up to four in these specific zones. And what the outpost player is trying to do is defend this area. We see that the Moloch player is coming in with four strength, two plus two, and they want to get to at least four to defend. If they tie, well then that's good, there's no bonus either way, but if they can beat them, then they can discard a card from the Moloch player's deck, depleting that army down. So looking at the outpost player's hand, they've got this electromagnetic field. It does no strength and all it does is stops robots from leaving a city. That can be really powerful, but not really at the moment. We've got this trooper, who's just two strength, and whenever they enter a city you get to draw a card from the deck. That's pretty strong. We could get something that we could also use this turn. Uh, this assault team, we get a strength one. When they enter a city, the robot on the Moloch player side gets returned to their hand. Well, I could put that down here. I wouldn't even be able to target this transporter because the shield blocks from this special text here. But I could force this brute back into their hand so that's two less strength 
that they will be putting towards this zone, but then the Moloch player could play the Brood again and put more of these shield symbols out, which are pretty powerful. I think the Outpost player is going to play the Trooper first and see what card they draw from the deck. They're going to put it down in Ziggy 1, so they now have 2 strength in that zone, and they get to draw uh, Neskuov. Well, let's see what this guy does. You can discard a card. So when you look at the activation over here, if it's a card symbol with a slash, that means you can uh, use the bonus uh, thing on the bottom of this card as many times as you want during your action's uh, turn, but you have to discard a card from your hand each time you do it. This says you can take a chosen module attached to a robot and attach it to a chosen soldier on that side. Well, that's cool, you can steal modules over. Well, there are no modules out yet, so this card is a bit situational and this is not the situation for it. Unfortunately, I think our outpost player decides this is all they can really do at this point. These cards aren't really doing what they need, and that means they are losing this district, but eh, what are you going to do? They will pass, and it goes back to the Moloch player. It's now the module phase for the Moloch player, and they can only play modules and activate them, so these guys don't really count. We've got an Annihilator module, which you can slide underneath a robot in order to give it plus two strength, and it just is always on. And then we've got this net module here. You can discard a card from your hand to disable a chosen soldier until the end of the battle. You can net them. That's pretty powerful. However, at the moment, the Moloch player is winning. They don't really feel the need to drop one of these modules because they're really good and there might be a better situation for it. So they choose to pass the module phase. So now we evaluate the battle. We see that the outpost player was only able to put two strength, whereas the Moloch player had four. That means the Molochs win. Now, no matter what, at the end of every turn, the district they were fighting in gets destroyed just from all the fire going around and the explosions. So this symbol goes down there. However, whenever the Molochs win, that's this little star here, that means they also destroy the next district. So they essentially push the game clock forward. So that's pretty unfortunate for our outpost player here. Now we go ahead and take this target symbol and it goes forward to the next undestroyed district and that's actually here at the Iron Gate. Once a city is completely destroyed, we're actually going to flip it over these tokens go away, and we can see this is kind of the wasteland destroyed side. And the next thing that happens is the convoy of robots moves towards New York. In this case, the Moloch player must move one of their robots from the zone into the next one. So they're going to take the transporter. It's going to enter the Iron Gate, and whenever it enters a city, remember, they get to draw a card. So they get one off the top of the deck, and this is going pretty well for them. This soldier and this robot are just going to hang out there. Now that they're in a destroyed city, you're not able to use any of their activation text, but you can play cards to move them into new cities or maybe pull them back into your hand, depending on the card. It's the beginning of the next turn. Each player draws two cards, and then it's the Moloch player's actions. So let's see the new stuff they got. They have spiders again. Well, we know what that does. We've got this hybrid. You can use it every time it enters a city, and you get to put a plus two strength token on a chosen robot. That's really strong. And then we've got the clown here. It's three strength, and you can activate it to kill one robot and remove two soldiers. Now, you can use the clown for this too, it just explodes a robot. So these are all really powerful cards. The Moloch player decides they're gonna put this hybrid down into the Iron Gate. We're starting to lose a little bit of screen space here, so I'm gonna go ahead and move this Brute and Trooper kind of up on here. We know that still in that city, we can pull them out, but now I can put this hybrid right here, and we know that it is associated with the Iron Gate. And whenever that hybrid enters a city, it gets to put a plus two token down onto a robot in that city. I think we'll put it down on this transporter here because we know it's already pretty defended by the shield. At this point, the Moloch player has eight strength in the Iron Gate. That seems pretty good. They're gonna go ahead and put the Stormtrooper down in the Cleveland Harbor in order to get that plus one bonus. And the Stormtrooper's special ability is that whenever you, the, both players tie in a battle, the Moloch player actually wins. So things are not looking very good for the outpost here. I think the first thing they're gonna do is use this move card. It lets you move a chosen soldier to an adjacent city. They go ahead and discard this card, and they move this, this trooper, who was over here at Ziggy 1, into the Iron Gate. And since they entered a new city, remember they activate, and they get to draw another card from their deck. And they drew a Commando. It's only got a strength of 1, but every time it enters a city, you get to discard the top card from the Moloch player's deck. And that's really important, because that's the thing you need to do. You need to get that deck gone by the end of the game. Next up, they're going to play this War Council card. It lets them draw 3 cards from their deck, keep 2 of them, and then discard the 3rd one. All right, they got three pretty good cards here. Scorn is probably the best card in the Outpost player's deck. Whenever it enters a city, it just kills a robot, which is pretty amazing, especially if you move them around. Captain Johnson is plus two strength. Whenever the Outpost wins, you discard the top card off the Moloch deck. That's pretty good, but a little more situational because the Outpost has to win. And then the Saboteur decreases the strength of each robot by one. That's quite powerful. For instance, right now, that would be a minus three strength to the robot player in the Iron Gate because they have three robots there. 
I think they'll decide to keep these two and discard Captain Johnson. All right, so the outpost is going to drop this assault team. It lets them choose a robot on the Moloch side and return it to their hand. They're going to go ahead and return this spider to the Moloch player's hand because, well, it doesn't have any amazing abilities here and it gets rid of this plus one strength. The outpost is currently at three power and the Molochs are still at six. So I think the outpost is going to go ahead and play this saboteur. It reduces the strength of every robot by one. So now the outpost is at four and the, out and the Molochs are at four, so they're tied. Next up, the outpost is going to play this commando. Whenever it enters a city, the Moloch player discards a card from the top of their deck, and it's actually public knowledge, so the Moloch player lost a pushback. Eh, that's not a terribly interesting card. So now the Outpost player is at 5, and the uh, Moloch player is at 4, but the Outpost player knows that the Moloch player could drop modules, so he wants to do a little more. And they're going to go ahead and play Recon. They get to place two plus one strength tokens on Chosen Soldiers. They will go ahead and put this one on the Trooper, and this one on the Assault Team. So now they are at 7 power. They're going to go ahead and pass, and now it's the Moloch player's turn to play modules. The Moloch player has two of them. They have the Annihilation module, which is plus two strength, and the Net module, which lets them discard cards from their hand in order to disable a soldier, which takes them uh, out of the running for their skill and their strength. So using both of these, they definitely could win this battle right now. They just have to think if that's worth it to them. They would actually have to use both of these modules and discard a card to use the Net in order to make this work. They're going to go ahead and keep these in their back pocket and see if there's a better time to use them later. So now we evaluate the battle. We see that the Molochs have four power and the Outpost has seven, so the Outpost wins. We see the bonus for the Outpost is they get to draw two cards from the Moloch deck and discard one of them while shuffling the other back into the deck. The two cards they see are the Gauze Cannon, which is just a really strong robot, and the Dreadnought here, which is immune to Outpost's abilities. Well, I think they're going to go ahead and discard this Dreadnought because it can be hard to kill, and they'll shuffle this Gauze Cannon back in the deck. Now we put a destruction symbol on this district because it was destroyed in the fight, and we move forward once. Each player draws two cards from the top of the deck, and now the Moloch player gets to take actions. They have a move, which is just move a robot to an adjacent city, and the Annihilator. Uh, it's an, a permanent action that reduces the number of outposts, uh, I'm sorry, battle stations for the outpost side by one, so that's pretty awesome. In fact, if they played it here, then this four would go down to a three, and the Moloch player would get to kill one of these people of their choice because the outpost player would only be allowed to have three people. Well, that seems like a really good move. So they're going to go ahead and play this Annihilator down here. It's also three strength. And looking over here, they're going to go ahead and remove, I think, hmm, this is tough because all these are relatively good. The Saboteur is reducing three. So they're going to go ahead and kill the Saboteur. The Moloch player now has nine strength versus the Outpost six. And more importantly, the Outpost can't play any more uh, soldiers into this zone. So they feel like that's a pretty good margin and they've always got those modules to back up. So they're not going to add anything more into this zone. But what the heck, why not throw spiders down into the Jersey crust? Because the spiders don't count towards this number. And it gets a plus one strength because there's no one defending it. The Moloch player is done and now it's the outpost player's turn. They picked up an EMP rifle which instantly ends the current battle without determining the winner and you destroy the district. So you essentially would use this when you are in an unwinnable position. Well, that might be good this turn. We'll take a look. The other thing they got is another commando. This is the one that discards the cards from the top of the Moloch player's deck, so a very solid card. So I think our outpost player is going to go ahead and play the commando down. We see this when it enters the city, you discard the top card from their deck. They're going to put it in the Cleveland Harbor here, and that's going to discard this retreat order. Once again, not a really great card, unfortunately. And then they're going to go ahead and use this EMP Assault. This means that when we would normally evaluate the battle, we're just going to assume there was a tie, the district is going to get destroyed, but neither side can win. And then they're going to pass. They don't think these cards are worth it at the moment. It's now the Moloch's module phase, but they know they can't win over here because of the EMP, so they're just going to go ahead and hold on to these and see if they maybe have a good opportunity to use them in the future. So now the battle would normally occur, but the EMP shuts everything down. So instead, we just destroy this district, but you might have noticed this bomb symbol here. Now, whenever a district with a bomb symbol is destroyed, you are going to, well, each player is going to destroy one um, unit from the other side. So starting with the Moloch player, they get to destroy one of these three characters over here. They're going to go ahead and kill this trooper because it was three strength. And then the outpost is going to go ahead and kill this annihilator. Now we jump into the next turn. Both players draw two cards. Our Moloch player picked up a new module. It's kind of boring, though, just plus one strength and massive assault, which is an instant it makes the next outpost's attack phase, they cannot use any instant cards, so that could be pretty good. 
the Moloch player would really like to win this round because that would destroy both districts and they'd move on to the next one and get a free movement. But let's see, they only have, well, they got six power right now. And the outpost only has two, well, three. So they're in a pretty good position. In fact, I don't know if they're going to play anything. Their hand's getting a little small. They could play this Ripper. It can destroy units on the other side, but they have to discard cards for that. This Clown, you can blow up units to kill even more people on the other side, but I think these units are more powerful than those, so this doesn't make sense. Move feels like it might be better later, and they could use this Massive Assault, but the Outpost player can still drop two more soldiers, so this isn't going to stop that. They figure they're just going to not play any of these and maybe use some of these modules in order to react to what the Outpost player does. The Outpost got two new cards. One of them is the Heavy Machine Gun. It's two strength, and it activates whenever this guy is in a battle that the Outpost wins. When that happens, they get to put a plus two strength token onto a soldier, so that's really quite good, especially if you think you're going to win, but you might want to put this into a zone where there's going to be lots more battles as opposed to this zone, which is almost dead. The other card they got is the Scout. It's only one strength, but when it enters a city, you can move another soldier to an adjacent city and be able to activate their ability again. This, this might be good. I think our Outpost player, unfortunately, is going to give up on the Iron Gate. It's not looking too good at the moment, so instead, they're going to throw this Electromagnetic Field down. It's going to stop any of these um, units from moving over to the next one, and this Transporter is getting pretty strong, and the Hybrid's great. So this goes here. It doesn't add any strength, but it locks both of these guys down. And now the outpost player is going to play Retreat. This lets them move two different soldiers. So in this case, this commando is going to move over here, and it immediately activates, discarding one card from the top of the Moloch's deck. And they lose a Gauss Cannon, so just a really powerful robot. That's pretty nice. And then they're going to go ahead and move this Assault Team over. I'm going to go ahead and stack them a little bit like that. And when that happens, they get to choose a robot on the other side and return it to the hand. So this Stormtrooper with its bonus is going to go back into the Moloch player's hand. And at this point, they figure they're, they're good enough. Not a great turn. They're going to be sacrificing the Iron Gate, but it's the best they can do. And our Moloch player is certainly not going to put a module down now because both of these uh, robots are going to get stuck at the Iron Gate. They won't be able to move, so they'll go ahead and save these for later. So now we look at the strength. We've got 6 to 0. So the Moloch player definitely wins. And this is going to destroy the district they're in as well as the next district up. So the new target zone is going to be over here in the Cleveland Harbor. When the Iron Gate is destroyed, all these tokens are taken off. It flips over, and normally uh, they would be able, the Moloch player would be able to move a robot forward in the convoy, but not now because of this electromagnetic field. So because of that, I'm going to go ahead and stack these guys up here on the card to give myself a little bit more space. And each player draws two cards. The Moloch player got a pushback, which lets them move a soldier on the outpost side to a different city. And they got the Juggernaut. So this is Strength 5, and it has a permanent activation of It Can't Move. Well, this is not a terrible time to put it down. We just started a new, very large um, district. However, this bomb, well, that would just let that character kill this guy off. Uh, hmm, they have to think about this. So the Moloch player is going to drop the Ripper. This lets them activate to kill soldiers on the other side. They go ahead and put this here. They're going to go ahead and discard this pushback, which is going to let them kill this soldier here. Then they're going to discard a Massive Assault. That lets them kill this Commando. Lastly, they're going to drop this Stormtrooper back down for 3 strength. So they now have 5 strength to 1 on the other side. Okay, it's the Outpost player's turn. They picked up a Trooper, which lets them draw cards from the top of the deck. And another move. Now, unfortunately, the Outpost player knows that if the Moloch player wins, well, then both of these are going to get covered up. This bomb will happen to kill somebody. But also, the <laughs> Moloch has the ability to kill another person, specifically in the Cleveland Harbor, whenever they win. So putting more people out to potentially still lose and lose all of them is bad. They almost want to get through this first chunk here with just this commando. In fact, it almost makes sense to get this commando out of there to use its ability again. So what the heck, let's go ahead and do that. They're going to use this move card to move this commando over here, which discards the top card from the Moloch deck, which is a hunter. Uh, this one kills a soldier. Well, that's a pretty good one to get rid of. In fact, the outpost player liked that so much, they're going to drop a scout down. This one lets you move another soldier to an adjacent city. They're going to put that down in the Jersey Crust, moving the commando over. This way, whenever the Moloch player puts uh, units down in either of these zones, they're not going to get the bonus. And that means that the Moloch player loses another card from the top of the deck. That's a blocker. Strength 2, and it can uh, die in place of another robot. Eh, that's an okay card to lose, I guess. Now I think the Outpost player is done. Dropping any of these don't really make sense at this point. Well, the Moloch player is just straight up winning here, so once again, the modules don't make too much sense to drop down. I 
hope that we'll get to playing these at some point soon, but at the moment, they're not going to use them. The Moloch win, so that destroys this district as well as the next one, which covers up a bomb, so both players kill somebody on the other side. The Moloch has nothing to kill, and the, uh, the outpost side, they decide they're going to kill the Ripper. Both players draw two cards, and it's the Moloch player's turn. They got some more spiders, and they got a brain. This is a weak unit, but you can discard cards to pull robots back into your hand in order to play them again and use their effect. The Moloch player is pretty sure that the outpost isn't going to let this go again like that, so they are winning by three at the moment, but there's a big hand of cards for that outpost player. They want to do something over here. They're going to go ahead and drop the clown down. That, bits, that brings their overall strength up to six. That seems like a pretty good position to be in. And they're going to pass over to the outpost. The outpost player got a hacker, which lets them, uh, when they, ever, they enter a city, they can deactivate a robot, which uh, turns off the skill of the robot, but the robot still uh, provides strength. And then we got the kid. Whenever they enter the city, they can use the um, whenever you enter the city ability of another soldier there. Well, that's pretty good. Let's go ahead and start by placing this trooper down, which lets us draw a card from the top. And we got Lieutenant Callahan. Strength 2 increases the strength of every soldier by 1. Ooh, that's good. In that case, let's drop the kid down. We'll activate the trooper again to draw another card from the top of the deck. It's an EMP launcher. This one turns off the skills of robots and modules. Whoa, okay, that's a building. That's pretty powerful. And what the heck, let's go ahead and drop Callahan down here for two strength and adds one to all these guys. And finally, the heavy machine gun, which is two strength and lets them put uh, bonuses around when they win. I think it's time to use a module. The Moloch player is going to throw this net module down onto this stormtrooper. And what this net does is it lets you discard a card in order to disable a soldier on the other side with a net. And that means they can't do their skill, but they also can't um, do their strength. The Moloch player is going to discard this move, and they're going to throw the net down on Lieutenant Callahan, effectively reducing two strength here, but then one to everybody else. This brings the outpost down to one, two, three, four, five strength. And over here we can see that the Moloch is at six. All right, so now we battle, and once again our Moloch player here wins, and they're doing really well. So this goes down here and here, but they also get to kill somebody off on this other side. Well, they're just not messing around. They're going to get rid of Lieutenant Callahan. That card seems way too good. This moves the ring up to the next slot, and that means that the Cleveland Harbor has been completely destroyed. And lastly, one of these robots needs to move forward. It's definitely going to be this Stormtrooper with a net module. Okay, both players draw two cards, and the Moloch player starts. They grabbed a boring combat module, it's just plus one strength, and a Steel Hound, which is also kind of boring, just two strength. So our Moloch player is at one, two, three, four, five strength, to so the only one over here, but... They only have two battle stations. They can't put anything else over here, whereas the outpost player can put a couple more. And they got rid of their only move, so they don't actually have an ability to affect the robots in this area. All they can do is maybe put more robots in New York and use modules later. And because none of these have particularly good um, abilities when they drop them down, our Moloch player isn't going to play anything. All right, it's so the outpost player's turn. They picked up a sudden attack which uh, makes it so that a battle happens where no modules get activated. That's pretty cool. And then they grabbed a move. And at this point, I think the outpost player is going to finally use Scorn. It's kind of holding on to it to try and hit a more high-profile uh, robot, but this is a pretty good moment. So when this guy enters the city, we get to kill a robot. So we'll drop Scorn down here, and that will immediately kill a robot of our choice. We're going to get rid of this Stormtrooper with the module. Next up, let's use this move, which lets them move one soldier. They're going to go ahead and take the kid, move them over to the Jersey Crest, which they just barely can do because of this three. And then they're going to activate the Scorn again, because what the kid does is it activates another Enter City object. And that's going to go ahead and kill the spiders. The great thing about this is that if there's no robots here, then they can't put any modules down. The outpost feels pretty good about that. They're going to stop their turn, pass it over to the Moloch player. They've got all these modules, but um, there's no reason to put it on this robot in a dead city, so they pass and we go to the battle, in which case the outpost has three power to the zero of the Moloch, and the outpost wins. When the outpost wins in this area, they actually get to discard two cards from the top of the deck. They were able to get rid of the Matrix Connection, which would have let the Moloch player draw three cards, who that's pretty powerful to get rid of, and the Kasparov module. This one would have let them move soldiers around. Okay, eh, relatively good cards to get rid of. This first district is still destroyed, and now both players draw two cards and the Moloch player goes. 
they were able to pick up a Recycler, which lets them take a module back into their hand from the playfield. Well, that's not good for them right now. And the Hornet, which is strength three, and once per turn, they can move to an adjacent city. Ooh, that's really good. Our Moloch player only has five cards left in their deck, and they need these cards in order to actually win the game. So they have to make sure that the uh, Outpost player doesn't keep discarding two. They've decided it's time to drop down the Juggernaut. This is five strength. They only have two... Um, uh, battle stations in this town, but that's a very efficient way to use them. And then they'll drop the Hornet. This is three power. It's pretty mobile, even though the game is getting to the point where mobility doesn't matter that much. But that's eight power for this Moloch player, and they can throw modules on those compared to the measly three over here. Also, the Outpost player, they might not have the ability to move these people out. They're kind of clogged down here. Okay, so now it's the Outpost player's turn. They picked up McPherson. It's a one strength person. When they enter a city, they can put a minus two strength on a chosen robot. That's potentially pretty good. In Intelligence, you can instantly view the cards in the Moloch player's hand. Well, this is a lot better when you're actually playing two players at a table instead of one person playing both hands. But what the heck, let's say that the Outpost player uses Intelligence because they really would use it at this point in the game to really see what modules they've been holding onto. And they see that they're not particularly interesting. It's just a plus one, plus two, and plus one combat. And then they can also look and see the Steel Hound, the Brain, Spiders, and the Recycler. Unfortunately for the outpost player, they have literally no way to move any of these people around. They're at their battle station limit over here with just three strength versus the monstrous eight over here. Realistically, the only good plan they have is they can put the EMP launcher down in New York. And what this does, it gives zero strength, but it turns off all skills on the robots and the modules. It doesn't turn off those combat modules. Those are just always on, but there could be better modules that they draw and specifically those skills that might kill soldiers off, all that stuff. Those get turned off when the EMP launcher is down, so they'll go ahead and put that there, and that's really all they're going to do. Moloch player can play a module, but they really don't need to. They have 8 strength to only 3. They're going to go ahead and save these for the final area. Specifically, they see this EMP launcher, but they have good modules that get around it, so you know that these are probably going to come down. So the Molochs easily destroy the Jersey Crest. They kill this district and the next one because their 8 strength is far better than 3. And this is actually going to completely destroy... The Jersey Crust, this gets flipped over, and the next zone is now the first district in New York. We're at the end game. The Moloch army wants to destroy New York, and now they're here. Finally, this Hornet gets to move over to New York as part of the standard convoy movement action whenever you enter a new city. Each player draws two cards, and the Moloch player goes. They were able to pull up a Hunter that kills soldiers when it enters a city, except this EMP launcher is going to stop that. So realistically, this Hunter is just a one-value creature, not very good. And a destruction module, strength plus three, and uh, wow, yeah, this just increases the strength by three. It doesn't have an activation, so this also gets around that launcher, much like the other ones. As you can see, the Moloch player is not actually in a great position to kill New York. They've only got all these weak robots here. They do have this three-strength Hornet, which is pretty good. So they're going to go ahead and drop the Steel Hound down first. Now they're at five to the only one of the outpost over here. Oh, man, does it make sense to drop more? I guess they may as well, so they'll put the spiders here because it does not affect this value, and let's see, well, they're only going to draw two more cards in the last round, so they may as well put one more down so that they'll have two slots left in their battle stations here. So they'll put this hunter here, and that brings their overall strength up to, let's see, three, four, five, six, seven. Now it's time for the outpost player. They picked up a task force. When this enters the city, you can take a soldier back into your hand. Ooh, that could be good. They've got a Patriot. Uh, whenever this enters the city, you can place a plus two strength token on a soldier. Ooh, these are both really good. In order to save space, I'm going to go ahead and stack some of these cards on these different zones. I know I can potentially grab them going forward, but I'm going to need the table space. First up, our outpost player is going to drop McPherson. He's only one strength, but he puts a minus two token down onto a robot, which is effectively a three-point swing. They're going to put this token down onto the Steel Hound, essentially making it a zero. Next up, they're going to drop the Patriot. When this enters the city, they can put a plus two strength token onto a soldier, and they're going to go ahead and put it down on McPherson here, making him a three. It's a pretty high-level target to get destroyed by some of these bombs, but they know they're going to get at least two turns out of them. Lastly, they're going to drop a task force into this city, and what that does is when it enters the city, it lets you take another soldier back into your hand. At this point, the outpost player really wants to kill that deck entirely. They're going to pull the commando back into their hand, and then play it, which discards the top card of the Moloch player's deck. They've only got three cards left, and this is going to kill a Hunter. Oh, that's a pretty low-value target, but hey, it's one less card. 
At this point, the outpost player is at 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 over here. So they're definitely winning, but they saw all those crazy modules. So they're going to go ahead and use this sudden attack, and they're going to activate the battle, just skipping the module phase entirely. So these modules don't get to activate, and now we just go into the battle. We know that the outpost is winning, so we're going to destroy this one spot right here, move to the next turn, and the outpost player gets to discard one card. It's going to be the second to last card, and that is a contamination module. Well, this would have been turned off anyway by the EMP launcher, so that's a bit unfortunate. And then both players draw two cards, except the Moloch player is out of cards in their deck, so they just draw one. And the card they grabbed was the Defender, which normally is pretty good. It's a strength of two, and every time you win with a soldier, you could pull cards back from your discard pile. However, it gets deactivated by this EMP launcher over here, so it's just a plus two. So the Mohawk player has these last two cards here. One's a strength one, one's a strength two, because the effects don't really matter because of that EMP launcher. Let's go ahead and put the Defender down, and let's move this Juggernaut up here. We know he can't move anyway, and then this Defender is added to the city. It's now the Outpost player's turn, and they picked up a Runner who is Strength 1, and they can activate once per turn to move to an adjacent city. Well, that's not good at this point. And a War Council, draw 3 cards, keep 2. Oh, that could be good. Looking at their situation, they are currently at 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 Strength to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. They're tied. And they're once again in a situation where they can't move anybody in or out. They're going to go ahead and use this War Council to see if they could pull a move. They found a Bunker, which adds 1 to the strength of every single soldier in a zone. That could be pretty good, and it has 1 strength. They found a move. Okay, that might be good. And they have a Sniper, which just kills a Chosen Robot. That could be really big at this point in the game, because remember, in order for the Outpost to win, the Moloch player has to have no deck, which they currently don't, and they have to kill every um, robot in this zone. I think they're going to have to not use the Bunker, unfortunately. It could be really good, but these two are more important. They're going to play this move here to actually take this commando and move him over here into this previous zone, which you are allowed to do. They can't really do anything there, but maybe I could get him back out. And in fact, that's exactly what I do. I'm going to use this medic here. It says take a soldier from a destroyed city and put it into your hand. So let's just go ahead and bring this commando right back into the hand and play it again. <laughs> when they enter the city, you discard the top card from the deck of the Moloch player, but if they have no deck, then you destroy uh, one of the soldiers that are in here in the city. They're going to go ahead and get rid of this Hornet because that has the largest strength bonus, so it's gone. And then they're going to play this Sniper, which is actually an event. It kills a chosen robot, and they're going to kill this Defender here. At this point, there's not really much else they can do, so they're going to go ahead and pass and hope they're in a good enough position. They're still at, they got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven strength to the only two of the Moloch player. All right, so now it's time to use some modules. This Moloch player must, because uh, if the Outpost player wins, they discard another card, and since they have no deck, it would continue to kill these robots, and that's the only way they're going to win. So they'll just start by dropping this Destruction module down onto these spiders, making them plus three. So now they're at four, five, which is still not good enough, because the Outpost is at seven. So then they'll take an Annihilation module, they'll put this down on the Hunter, which is going to give it plus two. They are now at seven, which matches the Outpost, and they really need to destroy two districts to have a shot here. So they'll use, lastly, this Combat module here, and they'll slide that underneath this Steel Hound. Each robot can only take a single module, so that all three of these robots have them. That puts them at eight power, which is one more than the Outpost, and that means that the Molochs win this battle. So we take this destruction symbol, we cover up one bomb, and then we cover up a another bomb. So there's going to be only one turn left, but at this moment, two uh, soldiers and two robots are going to get killed. The Moloch player starts. Well, they're definitely going to get rid of this McPherson here. Then I'm pretty sure that the Outpost player is going to kill the Spiders. Then the Moloch player is going to kill this Strength 2 soldier here. And then finally, we are going to have the Outpost player kill this Hunter. <laughs> we are in the final turn of the game. The Moloch player does not draw any cards, and the Outpost player only has a single card left, so they draw that into their hand, and now the Moloch player starts. These are the last three cards the Moloch player has. This Recycler is pointless because it would just let them pull a module back into their hand, and they already have one of these combat modules. Um, so they're just going to play this Brain. It's a one-value uh, robot. They put it down here. They have this combat module to throw on there, and they're going to see if that's going to be good enough. Our Outpost player has these four cards. The Hacker is pretty pointless because all these guys are already shut down. There's really no reason to play them. We want to put two people down, that's for sure. 
Well, we can start by putting uh, Nesku Yav down. We place them and then actually discard this hacker, which is kind of pointless to us. That lets us steal a uh, module that was attached to a robot, and we get to put it onto a chosen soldier. So we'll go ahead and take this, minus, uh, this plus one module here, and we'll throw it onto, I don't know, the Patriot. Why not? They've got these two people. They're both strength one. The scout would let them move somebody out to put somebody else back in, but it doesn't really matter between these two. They'll go ahead and throw this runner down who can move once per turn, but that doesn't matter. A Moloch player can play a module. They'll go ahead and slip this combat module underneath, I don't know, the brain. Why not? And then we're going to evaluate. So obviously the outpost wins. They've got uh, one, two, three, four, five strength compared to the only two over here. Unfortunately, this is not quite enough for the outpost player to win because when they win the section, we're going to go ahead and destroy this district, and that means they get to discard one card from the Moloch player. They have no deck, so we kill one of these people out here. We kill this brain with the module, but there's still a Steel Hound out, and the game is now over. All the districts have been gone through, and the ending condition is no cards in the deck, no robots in the city. So by one single card, the Moloch player was able to pull off a win despite this very large uh, contingent of the outpost here in New York. That got really, really close at the end there. But ultimately, the only thing that matters is that the Molochs win. If you'd like to see more full game playthroughs like this one, as well as in-depth reviews and vlogs, please subscribe to my channel. Also, you can directly support the channel at patreon.com slash johngetsgames. Thanks for watching.